Cobb TV. Watch your life make sense. When one looks into the human heart, we can see it is a collection of desires. From the basic necessities to the more complex social desires of wealth, honor, and knowledge. But there appears a point within every human heart that yearns for something different. It desires to know only one thing. What is the meaning of my life? Welcome to The Point. Bill, this is it's an adventure. I mean, so uh, where did the adventure begin? I mean, where were you born? What was it like for you as a kid? I was born in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And uh, I think when I was somewhere around three, uh, my mother would have schizophrenic paranoid episodes. We didn't know what it was at the time. Dad didn't know what it was. And her family didn't know what it was. What did it feel like? Did it feel like you had a mother, or was it a confusing thing? Well, not really, because well, she would refuse to take her medication. So, but two years after we would have her committed, two years after she would come back from the institution, and she would be just as loving and kind and helpful as any mother. But then she would quit taking her medication, and then go right back into it. I, I wanted a normal family, but I wasn't going to get it, and I knew that. Uh, at the age of 17, Dad and I were sitting in the house. Mom was in the mental institution. Uh, I walked in and asked him point blank. What? I don't get it. This is how I asked him. I said, you know, I watch you. You work. You pay the bills. The house. You have kids. But what? What's after that? You know, what's the point? You're going to die when you hit 70? What? Did he have an answer for yeah, you? Yeah, he did. He looked at me and he said, to become one with the Creator. What did he say? To become one with the Creator. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. But, I mean, how can you understand a thing like that at that age? Actually, as crazy as it is, I knew exactly what he meant. What did you feel? Well, I'd been kicked out of uh, Hebrew school a, a dozen times. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> well, because I kept having questions, they would hit parts in the Bible, and I would look at them and say, yeah, wait, sh time out. Uh -huh. And I would ask my question, and the rabbi, instead of answering it, would say, uh, just go on outside. And that was the way it always went. Uh -huh. So I pretty much had decided that religion was one thing and one thing alone, and it was pay to pray. And I was not going to participate in pay to pray. I still had a undenying belief uh, in a higher force in the Creator, uh -huh. but I didn't know what it was. I, I, that's when my true search started. I was 40 five, working at the place in Dallas that I worked at. I went to work there as a uh, technician. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm in my office and uh, the, there were seven techs that came into my office and they're pissed because I back flagged all of them for something that I considered to be uh, unscrupulous. Well, they all want to take me out back and whoop my ass. One at a time or No, seven? all at once. So I jerked my shirt and my vest off and said, let's go. And I'm pushing them out the door of the office and I'm pushing them out the showroom floor, out the, out the waiting room, out to the shop. I was, I was pissed. I was ready to fight. Well, all of a sudden I get out there and they're all gone. They're... So I went to the other side of the building on the, and I just sat there and I'm, I, I don't know how to explain it. I was so pissed at myself. At yourself. Yeah. Because this is, I mean, I knew what this was. This is just an ego that needed to go away. I was so, just, if I could have choked my own self, I would have done it. I was just really, just totally beside myself. I leaned down, squatted down, leaning up against the wall, and I'm smoking a cigarette, and I just, I just remember looking up and asking, just please. 
I can't do this anymore. I cannot be this way. I cried. And I got up, went back in the office, and sat down. I had just installed Mozilla Firefox. And, uh, the browser. Yeah, web browser. Yeah, yeah. And they had these cool buttons I'd never seen before. And one said TV, and I thought, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Click. And then it said country. So I said, okay, and I clicked, and there was Israel, and I clicked, and then it said Kabbalah News. So I clicked Kabbalah. Inside me, I knew that this is what I was looking for. And there was, you can call it a shift, you can call it a change. It was a. What was the change? Peace. Why? It was. I think it was because I kept hearing my father. <sighs> Repeating mm -hmm. his answer to me. And that the only way that I was going to become one with the Creator was to lose my ego and this and start studying Kabbalah. I tried spirit what I thought was spirituality. And I've reached some, what I would call highs, mm -hmm. a lot of peace, a lot of tranquility, only to see myself continually come back to this anger, this inner, this inner struggle that I couldn't answer. This is a, you know, it's a very powerful moment, a very powerful turning point. That happened a while ago. Is your life any different, or is it still the same kind of uh, emptiness and fullness? Or, and what's your response to that? Well, on the lighter side, I really don't want to fight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, those those urges, those feelings, that inner anger that I had towards myself. I mean, it's not the same. So your connections to people are, are very different now. Oh God, yes. You know, all my life I always wanted to find a friend, somebody a friend, just a friend that I could call a friend. It wasn't until I got involved with Kabbalah mm. that I understood and realized that, you know, all these people that I thought were my friends, they really, all they wanted to do was use me. And what about your attitude towards them? Well, that's all I ever wanted to do was use them. Yeah, so now, now the feeling that you have towards people is what? No, I, I, I don't. I don't want to use anybody. What do you want? <laughs> I, I just want to connect with them. All I want to do is to connect. I, when I say that I am your friend, and actually I can say that to you, mm -hmm. we've known each other a little while, mm -hmm. it's not, you know, what can I get you to do for me? How can I use you? That's not what I'm after. Yeah, so, I mean, this is, this is a very beautiful story, though, because, uh, you know, 